Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Lee and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It's Wednesday, December the 1st and today, Brother Joe Keller will be sharing with us from the Word of God titled, Are You Testing God? But first, please join us in some praise and worship music as we glorify the Lord.
good evening and well, welcome to winter. Um, tonight we're going a little bit further again into the red and I want to talk about our lives and when we're testing God. And I guess when we think about test uh, in school, it's we test our we, we take a test to see how much we know. Uh, we get tested and sometimes we feel like we know nothing um, and we study for it. We, we do all those things. Other times we could be um, testing our parents' patience uh, by what we're doing. Uh, at other times we're testing our luck, you know, trying to see you know, just how far we can go with something or if we can accomplish something. When we go to test God, there come some questions that we have with that one because it's told a number of times. I mean, in Luke 4, uh, verse 12, Jesus tells Satan, in fact, it is said, do not put your Lord, your God, to the test. And he says, to the test. Now looking at the verse he referenced, it tells us as the Jews did at Messiah. Okay, so we're not only not to put the Lord to the test, but we're to, not to do it like the Jews did there. Well, at Messiah they were thirsty, hungry, tired, but they knew that God was capable of all things and they were his people. They wanted water. Moses' reply was for them not to test God. We do that with our own children. Um, hey, Mom, I'm thirsty. Not right now. Not right now. Mom, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. And keep complaining, trying to push it through. Well, he didn't have to say anything more, for they already knew God would take care of them. Our kids know we would take care of them. Their question is, would he? It's not a question of, could he? It's a question of, would he take care of them? And that's where we start with faith. And that's where we have to take a look at our faith. Are we questioning God? Are we testing God because our faith is low in Him? So, let's take a look in here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, thrown in a fiery furnace, held on to their faith. If God saved them, so be it. If He did not, He was still God. Oftentimes, in times of trouble, we wonder where God is. We look for him. We, we, we panic sometimes. Sometimes we don't even think about even that. We wonder, will he save us? What we want is relief. We want the water for our thirsty throats. At other times, we ask God for signs and answers about issues of where we need to go next. God, please just show me a sign, please. And even sometimes we do reckless things and our reliance on God to keep us safe. Let's take a look at, te at testing God. During the pandemic, many won wondered if this was the end times, or if it still is. Some proclaimed it was. Well, where was God, or is God, to all of this? It's a good question. If we look with just our own understanding, we will not see him at work. If we look to try and see signs and, and portents and, and things that we want to see, we won't see him. Remember. To Isaiah, he, he appeared as the whispering wind in 1 Kings. With so much going on in our lives, how can we hear him? Think about that, the passing fire, the passing storm, the passing, all this stuff. And he heard it as a whispering wind. That was God. I have talked much about spending time with him. Whether reading the Bible, studying, in prayer, meditation, etc. I actually spend quite a bit of time talking with him, um, driving at night, even waking up in the morning, throughout the day. I might ask a few questions, but mostly I just let him talk to me or show me things. I like to sometimes just sit and watch people and I, and I see God at work. Um, Brandon Heath does a song, he's like, God, give me your eyes for just one second. I love that. Give me your eyes for just one second to see the people around me as you see them. I hear his voice coming from the mouths of others in answers to prayers. He has told me no on many things, of which I think I'm pretty good at obeying, but sometimes like a child, I'll still try and do it anyway. There's an old story about me and chicken um, ordering stuff for a Boy Scout fundraiser, and my wife had asked, did God, what did God tell you? And I said, God hasn't really told me anything about it yet. So I went ahead and did it anyway, and everything flopped under the failure. She's like, next time when God doesn't tell you anything, don't do it. So I've learned since then. 
um, I have found myself studying the word more, especially in the original languages, which I really do suggest. If you can, even bits and pieces, there are, there, uh, you've got Google, you've got uh, books out there, there's all kinds of things like that to go take a look at some of the translations and seeing because if you realize Jesus didn't, you know, the New Testament wasn't written in, uh, in English. It was translated from Greek, which was translated from Aramaic. And we lose stuff in the translations, and we'll be hitting that too. Mostly though, I, I spend quiet time with him. I want to hear the quiet whisper. I want to see him in action in the world around me. I can only do that by being still. Being in Michigan, think of it as being a deer hunter. He doesn't stalk his prey. He goes where there may be signs of deer and sets up and waits there, patiently, quietly. Though it may take days, he keeps going to the same place. Then one day he's rewarded. The more he does this, the better he becomes at reading the signs, looking for the deer signs in the, in the forest. He goes to the places where he thinks that God might be. Maybe it's a prayer room. Maybe it's you set up a room and you invite God in. Maybe it's at work. Maybe that's where your ministry's at. You invite God, you've invited God to, to help you out and watch for him to work and to work through you. But the hunter doesn't ask for signs. He merely looks for them. And it doesn't mean to look for signs that, oh, this is my answer, this is my answer, this is my answer. No. Look for where God is working. Once he sees them, he does not say, here's my answer. Here's my deer. No. Again, he sets up near there and waits. He makes sure he's equipped and ready. Remember the parable of the lamps. I've often heard it said that pray like it's up to God and work like it's up to you. Well, I used to believe that. Now I know it's a compound. It really is. It's saying I'm going to be doing all this work and you know, if God wants to help, he can. Well, now I prepare myself most of the time to be ready for God to use me. Reading, learning, studying, preparing myself, equipping myself with the word. Well, just as a hunter cares for his equipment, well, I'm not perfect either. I'm 60 pounds overweight, procrastinate far too much, and make excuses for myself. But God has called me. I know that. He's provided me the right equipment when I choose to use it. By being in his word and studying his word, I am better prepared to help guide someone through a situation or keep myself from getting into one. For instance, I was talking about learning translations. Jesus spoke Aramaic. When he told the apostles the Lord's Prayer, he would have spoken Aramaic. Thus the line, lead us not into temptation, in English most likely is wrong. The Greek translation, taken off the Aramaic, means that we are, not, that we are asking God not to lead us into temptation. Well, think about it. Why would God lead us into temptation? So what's Jesus really trying to tell us here? Why would you have to ask? Aramaic, do not allow us to enter into temptation. In other words, we're asking God to stop us. Jesus told us to ask God to stop us from entering temptation. Not to lead us through it or to lead us around it. or No, to stop us from en even entering it. Way big difference. He doesn't want to see us go through these things any more than we want to see ourselves go through these things. Again, spending that time, we're not testing God, we're following Him, we're seeking Him, we're looking for Him in the Word, and if we seek hard enough, we will find our answers. He won't lead us into temptation, He'll stop us. We're, I understand the red much better now because of that. We have the internet and hundreds of books to help us understand the red, the letters in red, the words in red, from Aramaic to Greek to English, and it loses its understanding. Don't just read the Word. Don't just memorize the word, study it. Finally, Peter asked Jesus to call him out before he stepped on the water. I have stood at the water's edge thinking, do I have enough faith to walk on water? I have a funny joke that I walk on puddles all the time. Look, I'm walking on water. Dad joke. I know I will sink if I try. Why, I don't have enough faith to walk on water? Is that what it is? Because my faith is so little? No, it's because Jesus isn't calling me to do that. And I'm not going to test him by trying to walk on water thinking that 
Jesus, you said Peter could walk in water if he had the faith. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I can walk in this water. I'm not going to test Jesus. I'm not going to test God. Jesus called Peter, and Peter walked on water. What a faith in Jesus. What a faith. Think about that. Jesus called me up, takes a step out and walks. He didn't test Jesus. He asked, call me. Now, when Peter took his eyes off Jesus, though, he lost his faith and started wavering and he started sinking. Well, it's just like my wife once said. Lori told me that once, she, uh, she told me once, told me to acknowledge the devil but keep my eyes on Jesus. Because too often times, I would look and see where the devil's at, trying to find out where the devil's at, knowing that I've got Jesus here, you know, Jesus is with me, so I'm going to look and see where the devil's trying to find me or trying to lead me. Wrong. Try and drive a car that way. I still swerve towards bill, uh, bulletin boards when I'm, or billboards when I'm driving. If I'm looking up at it, I think that's worse than texting. So you keep your eyes on the road, because where you look is where you will stray. So it kept me straying. And I keep my eyes on Jesus, and I'm going forward. And it's a lot easier. My life's a lot easier. I'm not testing Jesus. I'm asking God to keep me away from temptation. I'm preparing myself in his word. It's a lot easier for me to handle a lot of things and to help people now. By keeping my eyes and ears focused on Jesus, I will know when he calls me to walk on water or make that leap of faith. Too much of my life has been spent telling God where I am helping him rather than asking, where do you want me? Where am I needed? This devotion was originally written, this whole thing was written using the story of Gideon. But God changed my focus, kept me up and kept bothering me, and I finally understood why. It's because I started to listen to him. He had a message he wanted to say. He wanted me to tell about testing him and what it means. But he didn't want me to write these words and to, to write, a, write something because I do want to go and hit Gideon one of these days because I love the book of Judges and I love Gideon. We will hit that one day. But in this case, he wanted to speak and I let him. It's kind of nice. In this case, it was kind of like a parent letting a child make a mistake only to come back and ask, a child come back, how do I do this, Dad? You know, how do I do this? I know I am that child. I try to spend time being quiet, listening for God, studying his word, so that I better understand him and build a better relationship with him. Because then I find myself testing him a lot less. Testing his word, testing what he's trying to say to me, testing, hey, give me a sign, Lord. We're doing something, going out and doing something like buying 300 chickens for uh, a sale and failing miserably. So I am better able to help out in his kingdom. I make mistakes, but he is teaching me. We all make the mistakes. And he will teach us if we listen, and if we pay attention. I do not have to test him to know that he is here. I don't have to test anything. I know he is here. I ask him to test me instead. And that's what we should do, is ask him to test me instead. David said it. Lord, test me. So that I know where my heart and my faith are. I'd rather be tested by God than tested by life and temptation and anything else out there. Because God would be like the parent training his child up to go and to be what, what he's meant to be. Well, it's become easier to tell his answers with, to my prayers and tell him for my answers, what I want to hear. I still keep praying sometimes, just trying to be that nagging child who really wants to go to Disneyland and hoping I can wear Dad down or convince him that I'm right. I don't test him because he is God. I don't test him because he loves me. I am his and I trust him. So I won't test him. My faith is in him. My hope is in him. I have no need to test him. I just need to be with him. Let us pray. Lord God, the world dynamic has changed so much. We pray that 
your word reaches the hearts of people to bring a peace to them, whether they are knowing trouble, uh, times of trouble, times of death, times of sorrow, or times of great joy and happiness. Let us praise you in the storm, Lord, and let us praise you in the sun. Lord, open up your word to our hearts. Open up your word to our eyes and to our ears. So we know that that word is living and around us. It is in, written in the, the lives of your people. Let us see that, Lord. Let us help to share that and show that and be that. Help us to be the word, Lord, so that others might read us and know you better. Amen. Thank you, Joe, and thank you, everyone, for tuning into our midweek service. If you've been blessed by today's message and you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be notified of our future videos. If you would like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morris, Michigan, 48458. Or now you can also show your support through donating at our Patreon page, which is located at patreon.com slash mosaicnaz. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your entire family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway each Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord would bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others.